Welcome to Unreal Tips and Tricks. In this episode, we'll look at one of the post-process material techniques available to us for masking out objects in our scene. Masking is a powerful tool that lets us modify how specific objects in the scene are rendered. There are several different tricks that can be used for masking, including using the built-in chroma key alpha material function, using the stencil buffer, using the bitmask material expression, or using the custom depth and scene depth buffers. In this episode of Tips and Tricks, we'll look at using the custom stencil buffer. Two of the techniques we'll be using today make use of our video card's G buffer. The G buffer is simply a place in memory on the video card or VRAM that Unreal sends render targets to in order to create the final render. We can access these different render targets that will be sent to the G buffer in the viewport in Unreal. We can simply go up to our View Options button here and then go down to Buffer Visualization and then select Overview. You can see now the different render targets that are being sent over to the video card's G buffer. And if I move my camera around here, you can see that these are updating in real time, just like the regular view is. And if we look around, we're not going to cover every single one of these, but if we look around from the top left here, you can see the first one is our base color, which of course represents the base color input of all of the materials in the scene. We also have our specular, our world normal, opacity, metallic, roughness, scene depth, and so forth. And we can actually get access to all of these different render targets in our materials and then create special effects using them. If you want to see one of these render targets by itself, click on the buffer visualization button again, go to buffer visualization, and simply select the one that you'd like to see. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back to our view mode and set ourselves back to lit. We're going to be using post-process materials for these masking techniques today. If you aren't familiar with post-process materials, they're simply materials that can be used by a post-process volume. And then these materials will affect the entire screen. The first thing we need to do is select our post-process volume in the scene. And then we'll want to go down to our rendering features. And right at the top of rendering features, you'll see the post-process materials rollout. I've already got a post-process material applied here. As you can see in the scene, we have essentially a desaturated viewport, except for this singular object here, this telephone, which is rendering in full color. If I remove this post-process material using the trash can icon, you can see that my scene goes back to being completely in full color. The first thing we'll need to do is add a post-process material to this array here. This array is simply a collection of post-process materials because we can have more than one applied. So let's go ahead and hit the plus icon here, or add element button, and then we want to change the drop down here to asset reference. From here we'll be able to drag in our post-process materials. So the first technique we're going to look at is using the stencil buffer to control our masking. In order to do this, we first need to go into our project settings. In the project settings, we'll need to search for depth. You'll find it under engine rendering, and then under post-processing. We want to make sure that Custom Depth Stencil Pass is set to Enabled with Stencil. Once we've done that, we can close down our project settings. So as you saw at the beginning of this Tips and Tricks video, we're going to make this phone full color while the rest of the scene is black and white. To do that with the Stencil Buffer, we need to select the phone, and then on the Details panel, we need to search for Depth. Under Rendering, we'll find an option for Render Custom Depth Pass. We'll need to enable this so that we get access to the other options below it. So the options we have available to us are going to be Custom Depth Stencil White Mask, which we can leave at the default setting, and then Custom Depth Stencil Value. We're going to set this to a value of 1. Now that we've done this, we can actually use our Render Target G Buffer visualization here to actually see our stencil mask for this phone. So if we go up to our View Mode options again, and then go to Buffer Visualization, we can enable Custom Stencil. In this visualization, we can see that the entire scene is being rendered black, except for our phone, which is making use of a Custom Depth Stencil. If we were to change this number here, you can see that the color of the phone updates, as well as the value that is being drawn on top of it to represent the Custom Depth Stencil value that we've applied. Let's go ahead and go back to 1. So using this value, we can have multiple different objects in the scene using different stencils or we can apply the same stencil value to all of those different objects as well. So if I go back to buffer visualization, back to lit mode, and then select this statue here, I can apply the exact same value here, and then we'll go back to our buffer visualization for stencil. Now you can see that both objects are sharing the same stencil. 
And again, of course, if I change this second object to a value of 2, you can see that it is using a different stencil now. So let's go back now to lit mode, and let's look at creating the material that will make use of the stencil. So we'll go ahead and create our material, and I'm going to call this material PPM for Post Process Material, and we'll call this one Custom Stencil. The first thing we need to do in our material editor is to change the domain of our material. So on the details panel where it says material domain, we need to change that from surface to post process. And this means this material will now be usable as a post process material. You can see when we set that, everything gets grayed out except for emissive color. This is the only input we need for a post process material. Now, as I said earlier, inside of Unreal, we can actually make use of the different render targets when we create a post process material. To do that, we need to get access to a material node called Scene Texture. So we're going to right click in our material graph and search for Scene Texture. The Scene Texture node is an input node, meaning it grabs data automatically for us from Unreal, and then we can take that data and do stuff to it. You can see that the Scene Texture node by default is grabbing the scene color, but what we want instead is the input data that goes into our post process effect. On the Details panel, we have a drop down here called Scene Texture ID. If we open this drop down up, you'll see that we have access to all of the different render targets that we were able to visualize in the viewport. So you can see we have base color, specularity, metallic, roughness, custom depth, and so forth. Now the first thing we're going to need is the raw post-process input. This will give us the scene as it is before any post-processing effects are applied. Now as you may guess, we're also going to need access to the custom stencil buffer. So I'm going to copy and paste this first scene texture, and then I'm going to go over to the details panel and change this so that I have my custom stencil buffer. You'll find it towards the bottom, custom stencil. Now this will give us access to anything in the stencil buffer on the video card. In this case, that's going to be the phone and the statue. This will be our mask. So to create our mask, we'll simply pull out from the color here and do a search for mask. Our component mask by default has two values enabled, red and green. But in this case, because we're using this as a black and white mask, we really only need the red channel so we can uncheck the green channel. Now what we want to do is we want to desaturate the scene and leave the phone in full color using the mask. So that means we're going to need two copies of the scene, a desaturated copy and one in full color. Let's first of all get our desaturated copy by pulling out of the color output and search for desaturate. So we're going to need to combine the black and white version with our full color version based on the mask here. To do that, we're going to use a linear interpolate node. So I'll pull off of my desaturate node here and I'll search for lerp. We're going to want linear interpolate from here, we can take the color output of our post-process input scene texture here and plug that into the B. And then finally, we need our alpha mask to control which part our linear interpolate is going to deliver to us. And we're going to use our stencil buffer mask to do that. Now we can drive our lerp into the emissive color. And that's all there is to it. So now if we close this down and save it, we'll need to go back to our post-process volume. And then we can search in here for material and this will quickly bring us to our post-process material array. And now we can take our custom stencil material and simply drag it onto that array. So in this case, because we have two objects making use of the stencil buffer, we have both of those objects being rendered by our material in full color. But remember, our two different objects are using two different depth values here for the stencil. So the custom depth for the phone was one, and the custom depth for the statue is 2. So what if we want to make use of these two different values to create two different effects? Well, that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and load our material back up, and we just need to make a few tweaks in here. But remember, our phone is a value of 1, and our statue is at a value of 2. It's important to realize that those values represent black and white, essentially, in our masks. So a value of 0 is going to be black while a value of 1 or higher is going to represent white. So let's say we want our statue to be rendered in green instead of full color. Well, of course, the first thing we're going to need is our color constant value here. So we'll create one and set it to green using a vector 3. And then we're going to need to create a second linear interpolate off of our first one. So we'll simply pull off of that and add our second linear interpolate. And now we're going to use the green color as the second value of our linear interpolate. And from here, we need to get access to the different stencils. 
The way we're going to do that is we're going to pull off of our custom stencil mask here, and we're going to use a subtract node. And we're going to leave it at the default value of 1. So we're going to subtract the value of 1 from whatever comes out of our custom stencil mask. And then we're going to make sure that this value stays within a proper range by using a clamp node, because we don't want the value to go below 0. And then we'll plug this into the alpha of our second lerp, and then we can plug this into our emissive color. You're going to see right away that we get an error on our second lerp, and that's because we're using a float 4 versus a float 3 in a couple of our inputs here. So to fix that, we're just going to pull off of our color value here on our post-process input, and we'll type mask. And we want to make sure we're just using the red, green, and blue channels here, and then we can plug that into the B input of our first lerp. And that should solve our error. So let's explain what's happening here. We have two pipes, or two lerps here, controlling our masks. The first pipe is controlling, as before, whether the scene is black and white or in full color. So we have A is black and white, full color is B. And that is controlled by this connection here from our stencil buffer. This is then in turn plugged into a second lerp pipe. And this lerp pipe is either going to be black and white plus full color, and then other objects that are masked out using this other pipe here will be colored in green instead. So remember that our phone has a value of 1 and our statue has a value of 2. So coming off of this first pipe, both our phone and our statue have a value higher than 0. So they'll be used in the alpha channel to determine what is full color and what is black and white. So in this case, both the phone and the statue will be full color. And then they'll be plugged into this second lerp. Now on our second pipe down here, we're going to go down to a subtract node. And we're going to subtract the value of 1 from both of the stencils. So our phone has a value of 1. So that means it's going to be set to 0 here. And our statue has a value of 2, which means it will become 1. But in our second pipe here, the phone will have a value of 0, meaning it'll be black, while the statue still has a value higher than 0, which is 1. So it will be used in the alpha mask for the second lerp. So only the statue will be colored green, while the phone, since it's not part of the mask anymore, will still have its value driven from this first lerp pipe. We can look at our scene now, and as you see, we have a full color phone while our statue is being rendered in green. If we change these values, so I'll change the phone to a 2, you can see the phone now becomes green. I can change the statue to a value of 1. Now it is full color. So that is an example of using the custom stencil buffer for creating masks. We'll see you on the next Unreal Tips and Tricks. Thank you.